Welcome, ladies and gents, to the beautiful northwest of the Scottish mainland. The conditions are gorgeous once again. Man, I've been so lucky. And we're on a frosty beach for this evening's adventure. And let me tell you this, this beach is absolutely stunning. Now I say this beach, but to be honest, there's a good few bays just around here as the, as the land curves around. And I just want to spend the evening, this beautiful evening, getting stuck into some of the nooks and crannies of this area, really. This is um, Achmelvik Beach. I've been to before. It is unbelievably beautiful. And in fact, I've got a bit of an idea for a photograph that I want to get straight away. And it's going to require me to send the drone up. Uh, of which I've left in the frigging van. So first things first, I've got to go back and collect my drone. Oh well, at least it's only at the car park. It's only about two or three minutes. Look at this. Look at this for a little investment. Yeah, look at that little, little porta potty. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good little investment. I don't know why, but stuff like that seems to be just so taboo to talk about, but it's really handy. It's really handy. Right, let's go back to these cliffs and get this drone up. So that's the drone up and he's about 100 meters up and I've been mad to get this sort of photograph. This is what I've got in mind. Wow, even look at the shadows of those people on the left hand side or the one person. Is it two people? I think there's two people. Big long shadows, absolute class. And yeah, I'm just sort of firing off photographs. I don't know if you'd call this abstract because we're really high up. Obviously we're capturing a lot, but I hope you sort of know what I mean. It's I don't know, a little bit arty farty really, isn't it? And I'm gonna take one or two photographs, maybe a bit more classic, take the drone further back from the beach a little bit. And yeah, just a big wide angle drone, classic drone photograph of the beach, the background, the sky, the surroundings, it's brilliant. It's got some really cool modes actually on this drone. It'll do like panoramas automatically. It's actually got a wide angle mode, it's really cool. It does like diagonal angles up in the corners and stuff, it's mint. So yeah. I'll take a couple of these now. Whatever I like, I'll pop up on the screen for you to see. so peaceful. I've looked out so much with these weather conditions. The road actually to get down to the beach was uh, a little bit, I wouldn't say icy, like a bit frosty. I think it maybe put a lot of people off, understandably. Although in saying that, I don't think it really gets that busy this time of year anyway, certainly not rammed. But yeah, it's just dead. I swear, except for them people that I've seen when I had the drone up that were on the beach, I've not seen anyone. It's incredible. So I'm moving round a little bit further now. Just down here, like I said at the start, there's a few different bays. And well, I just want to go exploring. I've photographed um, Achmelvik before. And I don't know, really. I'm just the type of photographer that would rather go and explore something new. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Oh, this looks nice. Oh, look at that for a gaff, by the way. They've got their own little local beach down here. That is absolutely incredible. Now going back to the drone, I suppose I just don't use it enough, you know, for, for stills photography. I think I use it a lot more now since I got the DJI Mini Pro 3 for my videos and stuff, which is really cool just because it's so light. And you know what? I really like having the screen on the remote controller rather than faffing about putting your phone in and stuff. That's been, that's been a really big upgrade for me because I used to hate doing that with my phone. But, wow, look at this unreal i still don't think i use it enough for stills and that's what i had in mind really for for this location just to oh i don't know you know just just at least give it a little bit of a go so 
In saying that, I think I might take some shots with the Z7 now. If you look down at this little bay here, the far side is still illuminated in some light. Can you see that? <laughs> it's still illuminated, so that isn't going to be there for long. I'm going to get myself down there, see if I can take some photographs whilst we've still got the light. So I'm just grabbing a quick photograph here. I, to be honest, I don't really think it's going to work. <laughs> but I don't know, when I'm out and about, I'm just trying to grab more photographs when I'm just curious about a shot. You know, for the past probably three or four years, I, I wouldn't know how to put a number on it, but I think I ignore a lot of photographs. And I, it wasn't until I started shooting with the OM system at OM5, where I was doing exclusively handheld photographs, I, I guess I started just taking more images, you know, rather than just thinking, oh, I can't bother taking my bag off and getting the camera out. I don't think the image is going to work anyway. I think I'd rather take some photographs, um, even if I'm not 100% sure. So yeah, all it is really is, I'd say like a tale of two sides. On this left-hand side where we are on these cliffs, it's obviously not seen the sunlight all day, so there's still loads of frost. It's very, uh, a lot of like blue tones and actually quite contrasted between the whiteness of the frost and these rocks are just jet black. It's pretty nice. But then on the right hand side, the far side of this beach, it's just bathed in all of this golden evening light. So there's a beautiful contrast between cold and warm, literally. It's wonderful. But yeah, just quickly grabbing it sort of handheld. Um, F11, 1 80th of a second. I've just chucked the, chucked the ISO up to 160, no big deal. And yeah, probably be a, qu a quarter decent. <laughs> So I think I've taken a little bit of a little bit of a daft route to be honest. Look at the state of these legs. Whoa, all over the gaff, right? We are nearly there. We're nearly there, look. Oh my goodness. Look at the There's a couple of people down there a second ago you may have seen, they're just leaving. So it's only us, ladies and gents. Wow. Oh, the clouds off in the background there. That is incredible. Just a bit of rain off in the distance, just adding something and look, look, we are creating, we are creating what seems to be pretty much the only frigging footprints on this beach. Ah, all right, let's get over here in all of this light. It's gonna be the last of the sunshine, really. This has been a bit of an eye-opener, actually. I, I really feel that in this situation with filters, remote shutter, um, tripod, long exposures, I suppose, I feel like that's where this camera system fails. And what I mean is, again, I didn't mean to be chatting away about my OM system camera in this evening's adventure, but going back to that system where I never used a tripod because the image stabilization was so good, I didn't need filters because it had them built in. What else? I didn't need to use a remote shutter because that kind of ties in with the filters. This took me so long to set up. I had almost forgotten. By the time I figured out a composition, which I'll get into in a second, honestly, man, I, I regard myself as quite quick at setting all this sort of stuff as, uh, up as well, honestly. I think it must have taken me like four or five minutes. And I was thinking to myself, man, if I had that Olympus camera in the little hip pack, it would have been out and I've just, just been taking the photographs. So I guess the, the reasoning for, for all of this setup and everything that I'm talking about is because I'm wanting a specific shutter speed. For this shot, it's about between half a second and one second. And I suppose that's just it. Having that Olympus camera with the image stabilization, I guess that's what it comes down to, would mitigate the need for all of this. Even the remote shutter, you know, the filters, the tripod, what I've said. The camera would have been straight out, bang, and then I'd be moving on to the next one. And 
I'm loving using the Nikon Z7 again. Honestly, I'm quite enjoying using filters and tripods and stuff again because it's been so long. But I do think in this sort of scenario, it'd be great to have that setup, man, where the camera could just come out, I could shoot longish shutter speeds and just get on with the photography. Now, with all that being said, I'm not complaining. This is still a heck of a lot of fun, man. This is brilliant. I, I don't think this photograph's gonna be any good anyway. So it doesn't matter what camera I'm using. Um, I've tried to use, I've tried my best to use some of these little little channels here as, well, there's just a bit of a river sort of coming through onto the beach. And then, yeah, like this, you know, just as the wave comes in, bit of a classic, really, grab the shot with the remote shutter. The only thing I'm really struggling with, I suppose, is the balance of the image. We've got these cliffs on the right-hand side. And then, of course, there's nothing on the left-hand side. However, if you look right off in the background, I mentioned it before, that big rain cloud, he was a little bit more to the left. So I suppose I'm hoping that he's gonna hold a little bit of weight in the photograph on that side, but yeah. But a half a second sort of to one second exposure and polarizer on the front actually, which has been helping a lot. I never use that on the OM system. And it's probably another, another, probably another quarter decent photograph like the last one. Uh, so that is the final image just there. Yeah, I, I think it's just going to be a bit of a rushed shot, to be honest. It's going to be unbalanced, but I'm going to go around here anyway. If you just look as I walk back into the sea, there's another little bay just over there. So I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm going to give that one a go. I was just a little bit worried here because I think the tide's coming in and I didn't know if I could scoot back around there, but as you can probably see, I can get out that way. So we're all good. I've been struggling a little bit, to be honest with you, but I decided to come up high so I'm looking down on the beach and oh, that's just given me the idea to send the drone up again. So that's what I'm gonna do and maybe take some similar shots, just, you know, looking straight down onto that little beach. I love doing this, by the way. Go on. <laughs> See you later, lad. Oh, you know what? In hindsight, I am glad. <laughs> I'm delighted that I was struggling a little bit down on the shores because Oh, this just feels right. This feels like exactly what I want to do. So if you look here, very similar to what I was doing with the first couple of photographs, but obviously different beach. And I, I get, well, I guess it's the light and the shadow. Look at the contrast between the shadows and the lights. We've got that lovely patch down on a smaller little bay where we were at a few seconds ago. And I absolutely love that little channel that we were photographing. Look at it on the left-hand side of the screen there as it just leads us in to all of that wonderful light and of course we've got that incredible color of the water as well so just sort of moving up and down the beach like that trying to trying out different perspectives spinning the drone all sorts of things i guess for the most part just trying to make sure that we get oh that that looks quite good like that actually trying to make sure that we get that light and shadow in and then of course trying to make sure that the balance is okay So I just wanted to try and show you this cool little mode that's on the DJI drone, the DJI Mini 3 Pro, but look, it's just a bit of a vertical. And if I just angle the camera upwards, look, you can see there, we've got some, uh, some of the incredible mountains back towards the Sint, a little lock in the middle there somewhere. And then as we scan downwards, look at that little bay and that water and that light and shadow again. And what I can do is just set it there. I've got it in like a vertical panorama mode, hit the button, the shutter button to take the shot. Look at that! Oh, that is amazing. So I'll probably go a little bit higher, a tiny bit more sky do me. Grab it again. Look at that, that is mega. So hopefully that stitches together well enough that, well, you know what? I think that's gonna be shot of the evening so far. That's right, I know you could see them. I know you could see them peeking out. I've these now, actually. <laughs> a quick little tip for fellow landscape photographers out on the coast when you're photographing, and that is, I would suggest, leave 
the sort of bottom section of your tripod legs out for the duration of your shoot. See how it just gets sand and obviously loads of salt water down in the, in the bottom there in the feet. If you like then slide that back up, all of that kind of sand and everything goes into all of your joints, your brackets. And I mean, I've just learned that from experience. And then when you get back, you can just sort of rinse the feet off, rinse the bottom off under a little bit of fresh water. I don't know why I'm giving tips on gear, by the way. It's just occurred to me, I'm forever, forever breaking stuff. Maybe that gives me a bit more credibility to give tips. <laughs> Probably not. Right, I'm coming back down. Um, the tide was on its way out. So yeah, I don't know, I just fancy going down there to see out the day and determined to get a photograph with the Z7. so peaceful it is so peaceful these beaches up in the northwest of Scotland <sighs> I am so lucky I'm so lucky that this is my job I've got you to thank for that there's no two ways about it thank you so much look I'm here sunset on a beach in Scotland <sighs> it's getting stuck into my passion and yeah thank you lot so much for your continued support honestly you're all incredible this advent series that I'm doing it's it's incredible it's challenging, but it is quite hard. <laughs> um, a bit harder than I thought doing one video a day, but I'm gonna you know, make sure I do it. And just wanted to say thanks for all your lovely comments and stuff. It proper helps helps me to keep going, you know, gives me a motivation that I know you lot are enjoying it. But yeah, do hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so that you get notified when I upload any of these videos during the advent period. But yeah, honestly, thank you all so much. <laughs> You're all incredible. And yeah, thanks for continuing to watch. Now, this is a photograph that I love taking when I'm on the coast. Wide angle lens on, getting right up close and personal with, you know, a rock down in the foreground. And this is a weird one. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of an overload. There's so much going on. We've got these two big cliff faces on either side of the composition, which for me means that I definitely have to have it in a portrait orientation. And yeah, it's just lovely what with all the rocks in the foreground, you may be able to see right off in the distance, we've got some really nice cloud that's just adding a little bit, you know, to the top of the frame, a little bit of interest. Loads of peninsulas and stuff. And obviously the light is sort of pouring in to this area that we're at here. And yeah, I don't know really. I'm taking it at F14, just cause we're really close to this rock here. Look, it's like an arm's length, literally. And just one exposure. I was a bit worried at first because the light that's coming in is pretty strong, but the camera's fine with this high dynamic range. It's just, just the one image. The only thing I haven't decided is what to do with all of these footprints. They are my own footprints. So that makes me feel a little bit better about cloning them out in, in Photoshop um, if, if it comes to that. But yeah, I'm not too sure just yet. I'll decide that one when I get home. I've just grabbed a quick photograph with the iPhone. I'll pop it up there. Just, I don't know, really, something to stick on Instagram. And I'm looking at it thinking, oh man, that looks really cool. See how like when you take an image on the iPhone, it just does like a quick little bit of like auto processing on it. And sometimes I think it can give you a really good idea of how a final image is gonna look once you've edited your own RAW file. But yeah, it just inspired me to take a shot with the big camera and see if I can better it. The iPhone one would probably be better to be honest, but no, it's nice because the light on these cliffs on the right hand side has just dimmed down ever so slightly. And I, I think I prefer that. It was maybe a little bit harsh before and I'm deliberately incorporating the footprints down here, just like in the iPhone shot, still in a portrait here. I've just, literally, that's where I was before, where the bag, where the bag is and yeah, moved about six foot to the left, but probably a different sort of photograph.
ladies and gents, let me tell you is this, this has been so tough. I've been determined to get one of these types of photographs that I love and I have loved for years and years, especially when I come up here to Scotland. And that is simply just down on the shores as the tide is coming in and out, finding a nice composition and then just trying to time it right with the waves. I'm really happy with the composition. Now it's just a case of waiting for the waves. So what I love about this, I don't know, area that's going on here mainly is look at that cloud off in the background. That is unbelievable. And I, I guess I've tried to forge the whole composition around that, which yeah, it's been tough. It's very intricate. And what I'm going for actually is, just grab a shot there, is a, a square crop, which I didn't expect. Incorporating a little bit of the peninsula over on the far right, a little bit of the peninsula over on the far left. And then we've just got quite a lot of this rock in the sort of center of the frame. But I guess we're like post sunset now. And oh, that would have been a good one. Post sunset. And we're just getting this really nice glow on everything. It's wonderful. So yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. And I do reckon, I do reckon that's gonna be all right, you know. All right, at the very least, like I said, I just love taking those types of images, man, it's class. Now, just before I show you uh, the final photograph, if I can find my lens cap. Ah, oh, there it is, it's in the pocket. Um, I just wanted to say, I think I might have said this exact thing before, but this will now literally be my final call for my 2024 calendars. So if you'd like to purchase one, um, that's the front cover. <laughs> if you'd like to purchase one, yeah, now is literally the last chance if you want to get it as a gift, because obviously like, I'm not going to be able to get it to you before the new year and I've just got a few left and I thought I'd say that. Oh, there's a couple of people having a little swim in the sea there behind me, that must be freezing. But yeah, um, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you like this last image. I think I'm going to like that one. I think I'm going to like it a lot. It's right down my street and yeah, please do hit the subscribe button to follow me along on my little advent series where like I've been saying, I'm releasing one video every day throughout advent um, in December. So yeah, there's a lot of wonderful little ph photography adventures to come and I'd love to have you along for the journey. Thanks again for your support and I shall see you on the next adventure. Oh, out.